Sam, I'd like to eventually write something about Sam. Sam uh, was born a slave. Um, he eventually he was entrepreneur from the very beginning. He eventually moved to Stanton. He became a well digger. He owned his own house. He owned a horse and buggy. He married, beautiful wife, beautiful photograph of, of him and his wife. Um, he owned an, a, an all black bank. Pretty, pretty, pretty tough guy. Pretty cool guy. And good looking to boot, by the way. I haven't seen a bad picture of this guy. Um, so I think it was got. I got more and more interested in it. And then Lizzie Elizabeth. I mean, she figured out how to be a dressmaker. And those skills that helped her mother survive by clothing them and working for her and so like family, she survived and was able to then teach her daughter and that turned into a dressmaking business and she survived and he has her pictures in the book of, of Lizzie. She had one daughter, Mama Alice. And Mama Alice is the keeper of the clock. Mama Alice, as, as Calista told you, is the one who told the stories. Every family has to have a Mama Alice for good solid history because Mama Alice kept the history here. She told the history, she kept the pictures, she kept everything, and that's Mama Alice. And then Calista, who Honor the family feels feels honored to live in the house that her great grandmother. I always say how many great the great grandmother, yeah, great grandmother built, and and she has been willing to do endless hours of research and bring forth the things that then I could I could turn into a story because it's her story, and I am so honored that I was lucky enough to be in the right place for the right time to tell it because there aren't many of these stories. So Bill said just talk about 15 minutes. I'm probably already past 15 minutes, but I thought I'd tell you a little bit, bit about dancing at the Orange Springs Hotel since we have all been thinking about that today. <laughs> um, because uh, Lizzie as a dressmaker and was working at the hotel. I can't prove it, but I have so many reasons to believe it. Um, she was a dressmaker, she was here, she could get there, there was a lot of reasons. But I, I tried to prove that she was actually on staff or, and I put, but during that time, I got more and more interested in the hotel. And I have been in the pool many times, I've been coming up here for years. Unfortunately, I live in California, so I spend a lot of time in an airplane, but this is my love. And so I decided to write the book about the hotel and really sort of do the whole history of the hotel, but, but concentrate on the last decades of the 19th century. And it was a time of before World War One and before the depression hit. It was a great uh, hotel of fun and and parties and entertainment and my gosh, they put on some fabulous parties. And they've been written up in magazines and articles, little bits and pieces that I was able to kind of put together and talk about the people and who they were. <laughs> and where they came from and why the hotel survived after the Civil War, why it maintained its unique interest as far as the as far as the Springs Hotels originally. I mean, there have been 70 across uh, Virginia, but it had its own particular history and uh, kind of clientele it was very Southern. Um, and very much southern after the war, so all the big generals and colonels and everything showed up. 
I will tell you one funny story. One of these hotels, and it wasn't the worst thing, but they had a, a big party one night. Um, they had a, an entertainment, um, and they invited somebody to come in and speak about the idea of sending all of the black people back to Iberia. Now, all the black people were serving the white people. So I just thought, did anybody say, what are you going to do for dinner if we all leave? <laughs> no, I mean, it, 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 there were all these little stories, and some of them I put in. Put in. Um, they did, there's enough about it, and I have come across a phenomenal treasure trove of photographs, which will be very strong in the book. It would be the way to represent the book in reality is these photographs of black and white people. There was an uh, African American photographer named Burton Dawson and an African American photographer in, in this country in the 19th century was very rare. There are only a few known to have existed. He is listed in the census as a and a taxi um, And he took some great pictures of African Americans in their own settings. So we have those pictures. We have pictures of, um, of, of musicians. We have pictures of people at the hotel, the butcher that you see in that magazine. Um, and then I looked at and started looking at the fabric. Because of course, I'm interested in what people were wearing in fashion. And I became aware of the fact that the African Americans in West Washington were extremely fashionably dressed, unseen by the white people because they didn't mix at that time. But for church, for celebrations, for baptism, their fashion was spot on. And I can see it. So these two communities that didn't see each other were actually, I think, very much aware of who was wearing what and so So that's kind of a, a bit about it. Um, at the hotel, there was no running water, no heat or electricity or uh, indoor plumbing. So to be fashionably dressed, and they were, and, and the white people who went there uh, wore ball gowns to these parties and jewels and emeralds and fancy fans and hats and all that. So I think that's a time in history that's kind of fun to go back and go, wow, you know, no television, no radio, no internet, no phone, no nothing. And you've got to entertain 300 people. 24 hours a day. That's a challenge. And they did it, and they did it, and it's a period of time in history that I particularly think is fascinating to look back on. It's worth watching. It's also a transitional time from enslavement to entrepreneurship in the black community, and these fashionable women who absorbed what they saw at the hotel and in their own way manage to make themselves look pretty darn great when you see the book, you're gonna go, wow. <laughs>